Class 2 is the final race on the program. Before we get into the information, don't, of course, uh, forget to go to the website, hkjc.com, where you can see this week's long version of HK Direct. And the special studio guest is Karis Teton, who, of course, had a five-timer not that long ago, and he talks in depth about this race. Let's have a look at the lineup and its quality, as I said, Class 2 for the Shung Wan Handicap, 1,400 metres. Headed by more than lucky for Blake Shin, fast most furious Zach Pert, and Joe Marrera rides. He's the one for us who is first up. Gold Chester, last start winner. Beauty Spirits had two runs back. Noble Steve goes in second up, as does Lucky Hero. And then we go down to Hello Beauty. King of Hearts for Karis Teton, drawn gate 11. Mongolian King, pace from Hanson Bobo, Kazi Ferrazi. And Uncle Steve, first up for four months, up in grade, Alberto Santa to ride. For Douglas White. Now Chun Far, more than lucky, and Kazi Farazi are the two that have been back and forth to Chun Far in preparation. Right, it's a big field assembled for this class two 1400. Let's have a look at the speed map, Tom, see how it all unfolds. You can see there the draw. Mongolian King Joyful Trinity, Fast Most Furious have drawn out wide. How does it all unfold? Maybe handsome Bobo Kazi Ferrari, as I mentioned in the pre-race there. The two to find the front. He's the one for us, won't be far away. No, those these two up front, uh, Kazi Farazi, Hanson Bobo, they'll go fairly quickly in front, I think, as well. Uh, Kazi Farazi with the the lightweight Ben So riding and Hanson Bobo, Matthew Poon. So there's uh, two there that are going to be up on the pace. Another one for the pace option is he's the one for us. He's led in the past, but with the, the speed up front, uh, it's unlikely he's going to get involved in any of that. So he'll find a nice run on the fence. Uh, Gold Chest, uh, he was the last start winner. He's uh, a horse that. Probably going to struggle to get in from where he is. More than lucky, he's got the big weight. So uh, he's another horse that has raced forward in the past. But I think with that weight, they'll opt to uh, take a sit and he'll potentially look to try and get in somewhere. All right. You can see Uncle Steve. There is a bit of a gap down there towards the bottom too. Uh, maybe where potentially Noble Steve might want to kick through. King of Hearts for Karis Teton there. Obviously uh, looking like he might... Uh, need to try and get some cover. Right, let's have a look at the track work firstly with Mr Lally. Yeah, he's the one for us. It'll be the first one we'll look at. He looks really well on that map, didn't he? He should get a really nice run. And behind it, he's got a really good fresh record, this horse. He's uh, won and run second uh, in his couple of starts up fresh, so he looks well placed. Hello Beauty goes nicely here for Chad Schofield. Uh, he was allowed to uh, stretch out in this gallop, and I thought he stretched out really well. It was a really nice gallop from, from him, and uh, he hit the end of his gallop nicely there as he f finished up. And Uncle Steve now of, with um, Douglas White. Of course, this was Douglas' last ever horse he rode as a jockey. Mm. And now he gets to train him. The cheek pieces go on, the hood comes off. So uh, he's got a special affinity with the horse. He does, and no doubt there'll be plenty of admirers in the betting stakes regarding him as well, Uncle Steve. Right, let's review a, a recent race for you. We'll try and highlight as many as we can here. There is a, a bit to look at. Let's start firstly with Gold Chest. He drew well, barrier number three. Fast, most furious. We know he comes from the back. He did that again here uh, on debut. Beauty Spirit has had a number of runs. He kicked on well, ran well at his next start. More than lucky, obviously, was right up there in the early stages. And Kazi Farazi, as predicted in the speed map, Tom, might potentially look at leading them in again. Yeah, he, I think he will with that uh, light weight. He's uh, only got 115 pounds uh, to uh, carry on his back. And he's uh, trying this class for the, the fourth time. So you can see he was gone here. Gold Chest won at a, a big price. And uh, he, he won well fresh. He looked good in doing so as well. That uh, ran about uh, 28 to 1. Fast, most furious. He was closing off uh, late uh, in the piece there. It was a decent run from him. Not sure about Gold Chest, but I've definitely got Fast Most Furious in there. Agree with you there, Tommy. I put Fast Most Furious. And I don't, I don't know if Gold Chest will get this good run mm -hmm. in this race as he won, did in the last. He just uh, looks a little bit wide. And on Beauty Spirit in that race, that was 1,400. He then stepped up to this race we're about to look at here and went to a mile and got the soft sectional out in front and gave a really, really good kick. Now he comes back to the 1400. Joyful Trinity, we know he's a, a quality animal, getting on in the tooth a little bit, but uh, no doubt he'll be fitter for the run. And uh, Noble Steed, a very talented galloper, he'll go in second up. He was a little bit flat 
final stages here, but I think he's worth another chance coming back in trip. Yeah, I think that's the key. He's, he's won three times over the 1,400 metres as Noble Steed and uh, just thought the 1,600 probably just stretched him a little bit uh, fresh up. Back to 1,400 metres, he'll strip fitter and uh, he, he's had three wins in four seconds. So I found a place for him on, on a minor line anyway. Noble it was a real Steed. sit and dash this, Tom. I yeah. was about to say that it was a real sit and sprint basically from Beauty Spirit and he's actually stayed on pretty well. You, yeah. you would have suggested mm. that was going to happen with the way he got that uh, lead and was able to uh, try and hold them all out. So it was a good run from him. Uh, Dylan Moe again takes the claim. Yeah, I wonder whether actually going further in distance might be better for him, Beauty Spirit, as opposed to coming back to 1,400. Time will tell. Let's have a look at King of Hearts. Karis Teton had four going into the final race and he had to come wide here on King of Hearts. He was threatening at the end of last season. Got the job done. He did. I remember Andrew and I pre-race talking about maybe he's down to a winnable mark and it certainly was the case off 77 points last start. Came with a, a barnstorming run uh, down the middle of the track. Um, was a, a very good effort. So got up by a neck over great treasury who finished hard. I'm intrigued to see if he can back it up uh, this time round. He's got gate number 11. He had gate 6 uh, last time out. But whatever happens, he'll, he'll get back and run on. Yeah, exactly. And he, look, it was a bit of a, a little bit of a blanket finish, wasn't it? But there was did get up and win, and he was well rated. There's up in points with a wide draw. Mm. That worries me a little bit. Yeah, it certainly does. But he is fine, yeah. finding form and obviously finely tuned at the right time. Now, we're going to go to the trials, the two most interesting trialers. Firstly, he's the one for us. Arrived here with a very strong rap. And he hasn't really disappointed so far. Yeah, more raps than Christmas when he got here, wasn't he? But he has li lived up to it, and uh, he's uh, hit the line really nicely, uh, this horse. Look, he's going to map well from barrier one. He's going to get the best run in the race. And in a nice race, I think he's the one, because... Uh, he should get the good, good suck run behind them. Yeah, I think he will. He's going to stay out of that speed duel that's up front between Hanson, Bobo, Kazi, Farazi. That's Packing Warrior running second, as I mentioned. Guy Dragon, Lakeshore Eagle at the back there in that uh, trial. He looked really good. He's got a good uh, record to fresh up, so I think he's going to be tough to beat. All right, and the other one, Uncle Steve. We saw him in track work. Let's have a look at his trial. He was out the back doing his best work towards the end, but we know he's run well fresh in the past. Yeah, he ran real fresh um, for that run for, for Douglas when he was a jockey. Uh, hood comes off, cheek pieces go on, his work's been good. Uh, I think he's uh, one of the main chances in the race. You do? Cl closed nicely in this uh, recent trial on the yellow cap there. Santa on board for a white, and it was a blanket finish. He's actually eligible for a class three because he's actually on a mark of 80, but yeah. they've opted to run here in the C2 race. This is a very strong class two, no doubt about that. Potentially some class one and some uh, some group horses may be here. Let's see what Paul's got on top. Paul. He, he's the one for us. He should get the best run in the race, just in behind the pace. Uncle Steve with the lightweight. Fast, most furious will come from the back and Noble Steed back to 1,400. 3, 14, 2, 8. On top for me is uh, he's the one for us. Uh, number three for Joe Marrera and John Size. He's the horse to beat over two fast, most furious. A light lucky hero in this race. I'm going to throw King of Hearts in the race as well. So 3, 2, 7 and also 10. Yeah, I think if you like something in the final race, go your hardest. It's a race of uh, many chances. Now, uh, the stats. Let's have a look and see what Paul's got for us. Douglas White, Alberto Sanna. Yeah, they team up here. Look, they've had 11 runners together with a couple of wins, second and third. 36.3% first free rate. And I like Jada Thunder. I know he hasn't done much last season, but he's a really well-rated horse who's going well at the moment. I think Douglas White, uh, with those blinkers back on, I think he can uh, increase that stat. All right, and uh, overall, 10 races, Paul. Bellagio the best? Yeah, Bellagio for me, number 14 with the lightweight. I think he just meets the others with, better in the weights. And Rule the Roost, second up on the all-weather. He can get back. He'll be running on late. Alberto Senna uh, there. I think he'll be a lot happier than that picture after the race. Player of the day, follow me, Band of Brothers and Bellagio. Righto, my best is the last uh, race, 10 number three. He's the one for us. He's on top as the best value play. Comes up in race seven, number 10, Willie Way with his good fresh up record. And throwing a few about here in the ninth race of the program, feel free to banker a couple there. Can't stop the feeling. Solomon's Bay, Lone Eagle, wow. Private Rocket, Lakeshore Eagle, <laughs> Chicken Dance, all sorts of birds there. The graphics man was happy to see that one come <laughs> through, I can assure you. Race six, number five in the Mount Davis enfolding, I think, can, uh, can get the chocolates. Conquer the Mount Davis. And race five. Five number six, who's horse? This is very green, this youngster, but he's got an engine. He was charging home late over the straight thousand. I'll give him a chance up in trip with my winner and a sprint forward as uh, the other chances and put them in a QQP and hopefully we can get a little bit of a value. So that's it, boys. Should be a good day of racing. It yeah, should be. Looking forward to those later races. He's the one for us. A couple of nice races on the uh, dirt and then we head back to Happy Valley. And Nine Paul, races Wednesday Paul's chicken night. dance at the end of the show. Oh, we're going to see this one there, Brett, the old chicken <laughs> dance. But yeah, oh, I think he's a really nice... I'm part of the band, Paul. You yeah, do the oh, dance.
<laughs> All right, that's it. Look forward to your company trackside at uh, 1 o'clock Hong Kong time the first. Good night. Good night.